one of the most beautiful cities in America, Nashville, Tennessee. Proud to be at Nissan Stadium to bring you the 20th edition of the Franklin American Mortgage Music City Bowl. Justin Jackson needs 19 yards to join the top 10 in college football rushing history. For more on the best running back ever at Northwestern, Here's Olivia Harlan. Well, Taylor, his head coach, doesn't think he gets enough national attention, and it's hard not to agree with him. Four 1,000-yard seasons. Pat Fitzgerald says he's just a dream to coach, a once-in-a-lifetime type player. And get this, for all four years, he's sat in every special teams meeting, and he's never played special teams. Coach asked him why, and he said because he knows he'll have to do that on Sundays. Now, all that nor Northwestern running backs all follow suit. Andre, you said that that tells you all you need to know about the kind of player he is. Big impact on this team. And, guys, he averages 21 carries a game and is on no touch count for his finale today. Yeah, it tells me about what type of person he is as well, and he's a leader, an unselfish player that sets an example for his position group. When you do that, you, uh, you're about business, and Justin Jackson's about that thinking about uh, what he's going to be doing on the next level. Boy, that, uh, that that tells me a lot. We'll have to wait a few minutes to watch him as the Northwestern did win the toss, but will defer. So Kentucky will receive the opening kick. It's 41 degrees here in Nashville for the second ever meeting between these two schools. Northwestern won the first one back in 1928, 89 years between meetings. Good to have the Battle of the Wildcats Northwestern and Kentucky. There's that newspaper article from <laughs> October 19, 1928, a seven nothing win for the Northwestern Wildcats in Evanston. As you see, they used the forward pass, as they called it back then, for the touchdown, seven nothing, 89 years ago. Man, what a beautiful day. I think we're gonna have more than today. seven you points so? scored in this one today. <laughs> no doubt about it, but these teams are equally matched this is one bowl game I was eager to get to and to see this bowl season because both teams are so similar in their approach to things. Yes, they are as Luke Otto, the kickoff specialist for Northwestern, will kick it deep to Lynn Bowden, one of the most dangerous kick returners in college football. Bowden had a 93-yard return earlier this season, but instead it's taken by an up back past the 30-yard line up to the 33 is that is Zach Johnson, who doesn't get much action, but gives Kentucky solid starting field position. Steven Johnson makes his last start of his career with the Kentucky Wildcats, 14 and nine, when he plays the position of quarterback. Andre, he is the leader of their football yeah, team. Yeah, unquestioned leader. You know, he's a guy that has earned the respect of his teammates, the coaches, everyone in the building. The way he takes care of this, they all believe they can win with, with Steven Johnson under center. One of 22 seniors playing for the Cats for the final time today. And Benny Snell in the backfield fakes it to him on an RPO to start the game. And up top to Taven Richardson, who makes the catch in bounds for the big gain into Northwestern territory down to the 41. That's 26 yards. Boy, this is excellent coverage. It's just a better throw and a catch. And a guy that's got tremendous athletic ability. Had a chance to visit with Taven Richardson before the game. And just told him the physical skills are there. Put the time in in the offseason. Another fake to Snell. And Johnson rolls out, takes on defenders, and gets maybe a yard. Brett Walsh there, as you see Jordan Thompson as well, second down. Showing you some toughness early in the game is Steven Johnson. What the, you, you can't question his leadership skills. Guys just tend to feed off Steven Johnson, his body language. Everything is there. It spells winner. That 14 and 9 record in Kentucky and two seasons of seven wins. Nice. Wants to throw again. Escapes some pressure, throws against his body, and has Richardson inside the five. The most consistent receiver of the group this year has been Taven Richardson. And you see why, but this is a throw that not a lot of guys can make. Rolling left, back across your body in the middle of the field. Every coach in America will tell you not to make that throw, but how about the athletic ability of Steven Johnson and just the want to of Taven Richardson to come back 
and make a play for his quarterback. 36 yards, setting Kentucky up at the doorstep to the four. Here's Benny Snell, and he down to the three. It'll be second and goal from there as Joe Gaziano makes the tackle. How many times this week do we hear Benny Snell, Justin Jackson, it's going to be a run. That, you know, this game is all about the running backs. And then you come out slinging it. Taven Richardson showing you playmaking ability and certainly Steven Johnson in the passing game along with that. But we heard nothing else but all about the running backs. Well, Benny Snell has 31 rushing touchdowns, a record at Kentucky in only two seasons. And here he goes for number 32. The Kentucky Wildcats strike first. Well, you get down close to the goal line and you go to the guy, the shoulders that you rode all game long. A couple of nice blocks. It's blocked by Greg Hart, the tight end, to, on a kickout block to open it up for Benny Snell and Kentucky on the board first here in the Music City Bowl. Bandit fired up on the sidelines is Austin McGinnis, the all-time leading scorer in Kentucky history. Snell's contagious, isn't he? He is. Great attitude. It fires up his teammates, and McGinnis makes the extra point. Kentucky comes in as a nine-and-a-half-point underdog, and on the first series, plays with a chip on their shoulder, culminating with Benny Snell in the end zone. Seven-nothing Kentucky in Nashville. From Music Row on Broadway, over the river, and inside Nissan Stadium, where Kentucky wastes no time getting on the board. Mark Stoops, 26 and 35 in his fifth season at Kentucky, but he's improved his team's record, either having the same record or a better record each of the five years that he's been the head coach at Kentucky. Only one of two programs in the country that has done that. New Mexico State, who's also playing in a bowl game this afternoon, is the other. Second and third place finishes in the SEC East the last two years. That's the best since divisional play in 1992 and back-to-back -back seven win seasons for this program for the first time in seven years. And he's a long way from satisfied. And we had a chance to talk to him this week and he is constantly or continuously building the Kentucky brand and in terms of football. They've had a, a solid early signing class that he's pretty fired up about. And uh, you know, he said he got tired of poaching, got other teams poaching his players late in the process going into February. So he is a big advocate for the early signing period. McGinnis kicks it deep, and Jay, Jeremy Larkin puts a knee on it, and Clayton Thorson and the Northwestern Wildcats will start at their own 25-yard line. 6'4", 225-pound redshirt junior who thought about going pro but will be back next season for his senior year. Where does he need to improve, Andre? Yeah, I think it's the footwork. You talk to the coaches, you watch the film, it's just footwork, quickening things up. But uh, I'll tell you what, the placement of the football is next level stuff because he will throw receivers open. If you're on the inside, he's going to place the football outside. If the defender's on the outside, he's going to place it inside. We'll see that all game long. Second and 23, Northwestern at their own 12-yard line. The underneath pass goes past the 20, up to the 21 for nine yards to Bennett Skoranek. And they won't panic. It's not a team that's going to make a lot of mistakes. Kind of surprised with a penalty early, but a big third down situation here. And Kentucky can get off the field and still have some pretty decent field position. Need to get to the 35, third and 14. Thorson has time, escapes the pocket, throws underneath, complete short of the first down to Jackson. It'll be fourth and three. Yeah, 62 percent is Pat Fitzgerald on the season when going for it on fourth down and talking to him before the game. He said when they cross the 50, it is a dealer's choice. But this is clearly a situation where he has to punt the football back to Kentucky. Hunter Nicewander will come in to punt just under a 43 yard average. And you see Kentucky has been terrific with Charles Walker returning punts all season. Yeah. 
bounce off the side of Nice Wonder's foot, but takes a northwestern bounce out of bounds, 47 yards. Capital. Saheem King in the backfield, standing next to Steven Johnson. Instead goes to the true freshman, Lynn Bowden, and Bowden has no place to go. He'll lose a few. Yeah, you got to get right up the field. The, uh, the convoy's coming from inside out, and you don't want to continue inside want to plant that right foot, get right up the field, and just take what's there. That's That happens to a lot of young players because in high school, you're the best player on the field. I can outrun everybody. Patty Fisher is all over the place. He's a machine right there in the middle. Auction pitch to the man they call Sci-Fi, and King gets a few, and 42. Fisher again with the tackle. This guy loves Luke Keekley. Many think he's the best middle linebacker in pro football. He sure plays like him. Well, he plays a lot like his head coach in Pat Fitzgerald as well. Sideline to sideline, he doesn't get tired. A guy that, uh, as I mentioned, came from a great high school program. So he came in, they, they were able to redshirt him, but uh, he came in ready to play. Fisher with both tackles, third and seven for Steven Johnson. And the throw to Richardson, but he can't bring the ball to the jersey incomplete. That's one Richardson when he's watching this film. He'll look back. The big third down situation is going to wish he reeled this one in. Nice job by Steven Johnson and stepping up into the protection and delivering. It was there for the taking. No doubt about it. Just got to finish. On two occasions on third down, Ross, K1 Ross. Let's one miss it, actually misses an opportunity, and certainly there, Taven Richardson, another. Matt Panton with his second punt. As Flynn Nagel stands back and waits for it, calls for a fair catch at the 30 yard line. That's 42 yards. Pat Fitzgerald is Northwestern football. This is his 12th season, he's won 86 games. You see his career record as a coach and what he did as a player. Northwestern has four 10-win seasons. He has two of them as a head coach, one as a player. This man made it very clear to us yesterday, Andre, in our meetings. Yeah. I'm not going anywhere. This is my program. This is where I'll be coaching forever. Well, they have got a, an athletic building that's going up that is second to none at Northwestern where he got a chance to really design it himself. Thorson with the option to Jackson. A missed tackle by Kentucky and look at Jackson go in the Wildcat territory. That is Jeremy Larkin who got the carry there instead of Jackson on uh, the option toss. And in the backfield, you see the missed tackle for Kentucky. Yeah, on a rare occasion in which they rest Jackson, it's Larkin who actually has, the, he leads the team in yards per carry with 5.2. Fresh set of downs as Jackson goes out as a wideout at the top of your screen. Dorsey flushed out. Incomplete looking for Jackson down at the 17 yard line. Let's go down to Olivia. Taylor, Josh Allen back on the field. He tweaked his calf, trainer stretched it, stretched it out, so he's back. Uh, they really they need him. Sixth in the SEC in sacks this year. Second team all SEC. A guy that can play sideline to sideline. He can drop in coverage, rush the passer, as I just talked about. He is. Uh, one Part of the heart and soul of this defense. Second and ten. This is a jet sweep to Jelani Roberts, who has the first down inside the 20. And if he doesn't get tracked down by Jordan Jones, he may be in the end zone and dancing, celebrating with his team. I mean, right here, nice job of securing the corner. We get a nice block by Cameron Green. Their super back is what they call it. It's more of a hybrid tight end, the move tight end, so to speak. He's able to turn the corner for a big game. He got 12, and he puts Northwestern in the red zone where they're 91% in scoring this season. Thorson to the end zone, incomplete. He was looking for Jackson, but he was double covered. I'm surprised Darius West is in center field and has got a play on the football. Watch number 25. 
come into your screen, make a play. He's watching the receiver. Get your eyes on the ball and make a play. You dive, you, you somehow make that play. West has had two significant injuries in his time with Kentucky, has made it through his junior season. This is Larkin, and he'll get just past the 16-yard line. Mike Edwards makes the tackle. It's third and eight. Well, he is as good as they get. Mike Edwards will drop down. He can play nickel. He's, he plays safety. He's about as good as it gets in the SEC at that position. 90 tackles on the year, and he's played banged up late in the season, but still out there and still contributing second mode or tied for the lead in interceptions out there with four on the year. Northwestern needs to get to the eight. Incomplete. Looking for Macon Wilson, who is tied up there with Chris Westry, fourth down. A nice job of bringing some pressure to speed up the process watch the pressure off the edges they bring it late and time it just right both guys fighting i like the, the officials just allowing them to play today this is charlie kubander who's had a terrific freshman season 12 of 14 on the year and this will be from 33 yards and he puts Northwestern on the board. So Jeremy Larkin with a big run to get Northwestern into position, 7-3 Kentucky. Northwestern just kicked a 33-yard field goal by Charlie Kubander. And now Otto will kick it deep to Lynn Bowden. All SEC freshmen who here in Nashville against Vanderbilt at a 93-yard kick return in Kentucky's last win. He'll field this one from the 10. And he's past the 30 to the 35-yard line where Steven Johnson and the Cats will come back on offense. You were saying, Andre, earlier today, uh, you were surprised at some of the inefficiency that Johnson and his receivers had this year. He lost Dorian Baker, one of yeah. their best wide receivers, but he came out slinging today with those throws to Richardson. He really had to just kind of develop chemistry with Taven Richardson and Kwan Ross and, and Blake Bone, who was actually out of this one, and it was, you know, new, new receivers for for Skin Johnson. So it took a little while for for uh, the two to get on the same page. Jenny Snell's had a phenomenal sophomore season, and on two dives over a man into Northwestern territory. How about the high jumping ability there? <laughs> we were talking about you can feel Benny Snell play football. And I mean, every, he has you on the edge of your seat each and every time he touches the ball. What a run here. A nice little hurdle right there. Ah, give it, take it away, and continue on. Yards after contact, we mentioned it at the top, 42% of the yards he's rushed for this year have come after contact. We've got 18 on the last play. He gets some contact and still gets a yard or two here. He's the first ever Kentucky running back with back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. Next year, he'll be on pace to become the leading rusher in school history in only three seasons. Already has the rushing touchdown record. Had one in this game, he has 32. And Justin Jackson has put together four. Benny Snell certainly on pace to do that, provided he, he stays and sticks around for a senior season. Second and nine. Fake the Snell. The throw goes to Josh Ali, who only has two catches on the season. It'll be third down. Yeah, I talked to Eddie Grand down on the field before the game, and he told me this is a young man, along with, with Isaiah Epps, who had an outstanding bowl practice run. They all had both had bowl, bowl, excellent bowl practices, and they're really waiting on him to take the next step. He's a talented youngster. He's going to have to contribute in a big way next year. Neither team has converted a third down yet. Combined 0 for 6. Johnson in the traffic. Dangerous pass looking for Bowden. It's fourth down. Yeah, excellent coverage by the safety. Kyle Cairo. Yeah, Kyle Cairo is in great position to make this play. You'll see him allow Bowden 
to release off the line of scrimmage, and then there, plants right with him. Pretty much runs the route with Lynn Bowden. You got to know that. Stop, we'll snap the football, and then we're all good. Panton with his third punt, trying to pin Northwestern deep, and it goes over Charles Mouche's head. Northwestern will have it at their own 20-yard line. Let's go down to Olivia. Yeah, guys, this is kind of a revenge game of sorts for quarterback Clayton Thorson. The last time he played an SEC opponent, it was a big loss to Tennessee in the Outback Bowl. Still their largest margin of victory, 45-6. to six. So when he found out the opponent in this one, he was pretty excited. He said, I got to admit, that's one thing I was looking forward to in this game. He was a freshman starter back in the end of the 2015 season. He was intercepted twice, sacked four times, and now he comes into this one as Northwestern's all-time winningest quarterback back with 26 career wins and he hands off to the best back in Northwestern history Justin Jackson who has a chance to get into the top 10 all time in college football rushing today yeah really got a lot of respect for this young man three down back and you know what you got to be durable to do and accomplish what he's done rushing for a thousand yards four consecutive years it's amazing it's 14 more this time Thorson loads up to Skoranek and Bennett makes the catch, but a flag comes in, and Northwestern thinks it's on Kentucky. Uh, and it is. It's just a, a little bit extra by Derek Beatty, the corner, where you don't have to flip a guy like that. That is what they're trying to get out of football. With wrestling, it's a belly-to-belly -belly suplex. <laughs> After the play, personal foul. Defense, number eight. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Dutton, it doesn't play in college football. This throw here by Thorson, the completion, and that right there, every time is going to draw a penalty, especially if it's even close to the whistle. So with the catch and the personal foul, that's a 24-yard play for Northwestern that gets them right near midfield. Here's Jackson looking for space. And he is near the 45-yard line. Nice move, good patience. You see why this young man is, has gone about the way he's done it. Only one of nine players to rush for 1,000 yards in four consecutive years. And he slips and falls just past the 43-yard line on a second and three. And what's the last play? of the first quarter in the Franklin American Mortgage Music City Bowl. Battle of the Wildcats today. Kentucky leads Northwestern 7-3. We're back to Nashville in just a moment. This man, Justin Jackson, needs five yards to become the 10th leading rusher in college football history. He's already passed a bunch of famous running backs that we'll show you in just a moment. First things first, he needs to get his team a first down on a third and less than a yard. Here's the pitch to him. And he's 10th in college football history inside the 30-yard line. 14 yards there for Justin Jackson. Already had passed the likes of Marshall Falk, Marcus Allen, from USC on that list. The great George Rogers, part of Andre Ware's Heisman fraternity. Two-time winner, Archie Griffin, and Herschel Walker. Four of those five guys won the Heisman Trophy. Justin Jackson doesn't get a lot of attention outside the Big Ten. Here's Larkin throwing back to Thorson, and Clayton makes the catch inside the 10-yard line. But he's ripping his right knee in some pain there on what will be a first and goal. Oh, boy. <clears throat> Matt Ovidi is the backup who's played some this year, but Jordan Jones reads this out. It's a little late, but he's able to recover and get back to the quarterback, Clayton Thorson. I mean, you could just kind of see that, that left knee, or right knee actually buckle as Jordan Jones makes contact right there. Not a pretty sight. Huge thrown to the crowd no when they showed doubt. it on the on the board here and Thorson in agonizing pain. It's just a 
An ordinary tackle by Jordan Jones and Cleet looked like it got stuck. And uh, yeah. you wind up with uh, with a bad bad injury. Yeah, so first and goal for Alvedi from the five with Justin Jackson standing next to him. And here's Jackson straight ahead to the goal line, powers in. Touchdown, Northwestern. You just don't think that he can run between the tackles at 5'11", 200 pounds, but defenders rarely get a straight shot on Justin Jackson. And you'll see here, this is just second effort. He's engaged by Courtney Love right about the line of scrimmage. And he actually goes forward. And you see there the approval of Pat Fitzgerald. <laughs> Does this man love football or not? Uh, and there's no doubt about it. All you got to do is sit in a room with him for about a minute. So much emotion from Fitz in his 12th season as the head coach of the Wildcats, searching for their eighth straight win. Kubander's extra point is good, and Northwestern has its first lead. They have been outstanding in the second quarter this season. More on that in just a moment, but let's get an update on Clayton Thorson down to Olivia. Yeah, Taylor, it is his right knee that was injured. He can move the leg, and an athletic trainer told me they couldn't really evaluate on the field to know the severity, so obviously going in the locker room, but, the, but Northwestern also lost another offensive player on that drive, wide receiver Bennett Skoranek. He's in the locker room getting evaluated after that big hit. His return is questionable. Northwestern's been outstanding in quarters two and four this year. They didn't score a point in their last three games in the first quarter until they had a field goal today. But look at those numbers. 40 points in the first quarter to 136 in the second. And they add to it today with that touchdown score just a moment ago. Yeah, they've been magnificent. And what it tells me is they figure you, you out after the first quarter, and then it's just coaching. We're going to change up some things. They're doing this. We're going to go to this. And, and Northwestern has been just about automatic in the second and fourth quarters of games. Bowden fields this one inside the five. The man can fly and he's up near the 40-yard line. True freshman that does everything. Wide receiver, running game, throwing passes, and he's first team All-SEC in the kick return game. Yeah, he got a couple of nice blocks up front. I think Josh Pascal was on, on that kickoff return team out throwing a block in front of Lynn Boat. A couple of true freshmen doing some nice work. Youngstown, Ohio, that is Mark Stoops country. Stoops has a lot of his relatives here in the stadium today. Steven Johnson goes to the ground to Sahim King. Sci-fi, as they call him, has been the primary backup to Benny Snell all season long. He gets two there, and he's going to have to be the workhorse after Snell was ejected a few minutes ago. Now, we did. We were told that A.J. Rose had a magnificent a series of bold practices that uh, they that the coaches talked about a redshirt freshman from Cleveland Ohio so I imagine we're gonna see him along with Saheem King second and eight Johnson and that could be picked off it is intercepted by Montre Hardage who got his hands underneath the football after it bounced off a receiver yeah, third interception of the year for Hardage and Steven Johnson has just kind of been off the mark a little bit behind receivers and there you I mean, you're getting hit that's one that uh, those just happen off a of receivers hands both guys trying to make a play Johnson under duress Ross kind of sliding gets a hand on it and just bad luck and he slips and falls gets that hand on it and as you see at the end of the play Hartage did a great job of getting those hands underneath the football for his eighth career interception. Alvidi loads up as a wide open receiver. That is Charlie Fessler. Well, you have got to get off the hash mark if you're a safety and they're trying to rotate coverage. You just don't get there in time. Derek Beatty a little bit late in that rotation. 28 yards down to the Kentucky 24. Alvidi's first completion since the middle of October. Late option.
option toss to Jackson. And Jackson takes on tacklers, might have gotten a yard. Taylor, we've seen this in this Kentucky secondary and defense before. The teams start to run the football with a little bit of success, like Northwestern has with Justin Jackson. And it kind of opens them up for explosive plays down the field. Guys get caught peeking in the backfield, maybe thinking about helping on run and run support. And a receiver or two gets behind this secondary. Jackson straight ahead, Jordan Jones. Wrestles him to the ground. Oh, what a play. It'll be third down. What a play, and a guy that plays with so much intensity. Sometimes too much. He had three personal fouls against Louisville in the regular season finale, but has learned from the mistakes that he made that day. No doubt. Now, I would rather have to calm him down than to try to get him to play with that intensity. Pat so. Fitzgerald said he loved watching him play yeah, he did. for Kentucky. He already has seven tackles in the game. Talk specifically about 34, Jordan Jones. Kentucky needs to get to the 14 with five on the play clock. Make that Northwestern to the 14 yard line. This is Jackson on a third and six, and he has passed that and near the goal line. First and goal for the terrific tailback for the Northwestern Wildcats. Yeah, this is a special player that not a lot of people in the country have had a chance to see. Four consecutive 1,000-yard seasons, and you see why. The ability to make people miss. He is tough between the tackles. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. 43 receptions on the year. 40 career rushing touchdowns, and now a first and goal. There's number 41. airborne here His job in the middle they pull JB Butler around and really don't even need the block it's the athletic ability of Justin Jackson to will himself into the end zone third in Big Ten history in career rushing yards went to number 10 in college football history today in the second quarter Archie Griffin won two Eisman trophies Ron Dane won one those are the two guys in front of him in Big Ten history Bender gets the extra point up, and Northwestern's lead is double digit suddenly with 17 unanswered points. Montre Hardage with the interception off the bounce. And then Justin Jackson finishes it all. Northwestern on top. Northwestern's up 17 to 7. Justin Jackson already with two touchdown runs in the game. Yeah, you talk about a guy that can run between the tackles, outside. Mention the fact that how well he catches the football, but he is dangerous when he gets in the open field, and rarely do you get to measure him up. Took it away from Lynn Bowden, and it is taken past the 35-yard line to the 36. We've got Drew Barker here, 6'3", 220-pound junior quarterback who actually Started some games last year. Both starting quarterbacks out of the game after Steven Johnson injured on the bench on the last series. Barker, a 50% passer, throws short to King as there's a flag that comes in. Patty Fisher blowing up Ooh. the end of the play. Personal foul, illegal hands to the face. Offense number 71, 15-yard penalty, replay first down. Logan Sundberg, the left guard, has been steady all year long and played as a true freshman last year, named to the all-SEC freshman team, but you'll see here that left hand just getting under the face mask. And Jordan Thompson, the defensive tackle. That's four personal fouls on Kentucky in the first yeah. half. After review, there are fouls by both teams on the play. Targeting. Defense number 42. Number 42 is disqualified. Personal foul, illegal hands to the face, offense number 71. The penalty's offset. Replay first down. 
Andre, if you were to name five players that were most significant in this game, Fisher, Snell, Johnson, and Thorson would all be on that list, and they're all out of the game. I, I don't see, I don't see it on that play. And I'm, <laughs> I'm an offensive player. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't like getting on the officials, but when you. You should call the game and not be a part of it. And they have been way too much involved tonight. Parker again underneath the king. Who finally steps out of bounds with 14 seconds left. Uh, you may have an opportunity to take a shot or two depending on what you get here on second down if you're Drew Barker. Has some experience, started last year as the starter before giving way to Steven Johnson. And uh, Steven Johnson has never looked back. He had a significant back injury that happened in the Florida game. He did play against New Mexico State the third game of the season last year, and as you mentioned, was out for the year. And Steven Johnson has been the starter ever since. Parker eludes the sack, throws down the field, and that is caught by Kaywan Ross. This is an NFL field, but can't get up and run in a college game. That's 16 yards. Well, you got to hurry or go ahead and spend the time out here. They do exactly that. They take the time out. So now he'll have one play in which to try to buy some time and allow receivers to get to the end zone. Parker will try the Hail Mary, but he gets hit as he throws. And that's Joe Gaziano again that applied the pressure to end the first half. Northwestern scores 17 unanswered points after Kentucky scored on the first possession of the game. We've had ejections, serious injuries, and all kinds of controversy in the first half. I just couldn't protect Drew Barker long enough to allow that to develop where he could even get a shot, get a shot down the field delivered. Olivia has Pat Fitzgerald. Thank you, Coach. A lot of drama. You just lost Patty Fisher. I know he's a big piece of your defense. How does that change things on that side of the ball? Well, what a great opportunity for Nathan Fox. It's his time, you know, and same thing with Matt Alviti. That's uh, what we built our program on. Next man up, and hopefully our character will shine through here in the second half. After Clayton Thorson's injury, I saw you gather the team. What did you say to them after losing their leader? Well, I told them what Clayton said to me, and uh, we'll, we'll keep that between us for right now. But uh, he's a heck of a competitor and a great young man, and I expect Matt to go out and play great 30 minutes for him. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Go Cats. We'll take some backup. Great play from backups in order for Northwestern to win their eighth consecutive game. They lead 17 to 7. Let's send it to the studio. You're watching the Franklin American Mortgage Music City Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. Northwestern with 17 unanswered points leads Kentucky as we get ready for the start of the third quarter. We are shaking our heads at what we just <laughs> witnessed in the first half. Yeah. He's Andre Ware. I'm Taylor Sarser. Olivia Harlan is on the field. Twitter's losing its mind right now. We've had ejections. We've had significant injuries, a lot of craziness in the first half. Yeah, it really has. I mean, just uh, you just don't know how to handle what what went on in the first half of this ball game. Yeah, Thorson, Clayton Thorson, the quarterback, with a serious right knee injury there. Benny Snell gets ejected for this, I guess you call it, contact with the referee. So his season ends. Steven Johnson gets tackled out of bounds, hurt on the play goes to the locker room. We'll see if he's able to go in the second half. And then Patty Fisher, best linebacker for Northwestern, ejected for that controversial targeting call. Almost all of those were questionable. Yeah, the injury you can't do anything about. That just happens, and it's part of football. But to say that a player contacted an official when you initiated it as the official yourself is just unreal, and especially when it's video evidence to, so we see what actually went on. I, I've never seen anything like that to eject a player in that sense. You get a warning or some sort of, of some sort, but uh, that was just ridiculous, and it just changed the course of the game. Then the Patty Fisher uh, targeting penalty, that, I don't know what a form tackle is anymore. I really don't, and I thought I had a pretty good bead on what targeting was. That looked like a pretty good form tackle to me. 
could truly argue, I'll say it again, that four of the five best players in the game are either injured or ejected. We'll see if Steven Johnson's able to come out when Kentucky gets the football back. This is Larkin from his own end zone, and he's back out near the 28-yard line. A moment ago, Olivia Harlan spoke to Kentucky coach Mark Stoops. Thank you, Coach. First of all, how is Steven Johnson and what happened on that play? He'll, he'll, he'll be okay. He got hurt. He was hurt. I don't think they knew he was hurt. He was in the, he was uh, on the border of being in play, and uh, and I was thinking about going for it. So uh, he was injured laying there, and so there was a lot of confusion there. Also a lot of confusion on the Benny Snell ejection call. How did the refs explain that to you? The, the official told me that Benny grabbed him and uh, grabbed his arms. And, I was told that that wasn't the case. I don't know. I can't worry about that. But if, 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 if we if we grabbed an official, then he should be ejected. If he didn't, then I'm not sure. We'll have to deal with it later. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. You don't know what the – you can't do anything about it if it's an incorrect call, but it takes Snell out of the game. The one constant through all this game has been Justin Jackson, who's now the 10th leading rusher in college football history. He has 93 rushing yards after seven more on the last play. Backup quarterback Matt Alvedi with an accurate pass on the slant route there to Jace James. It's first down. And Alvedi has thrown a couple of nice balls uh, in his time in the ball game. He came in as a 63% passer, completing 7 of 11 on the year in the one touchdown pass uh, in the Duke game. But uh, he's, he's looked sharp. 40-yard line now, and on the sweep, that is Jelani Roberts, who had a 12-yard first down run a little earlier, might have gotten a yard there. Not big in stature, but certainly quick, and they love to use him quick in the screen game and then speed sweeps like that play. He's done a nice job tonight. Two touchdowns on the year for Jelani Roberts. Ultimate by committee. Group at wide receiver this year after losing the Big Ten Rookie of the Year, receiver of the year, rather, Austin Carr last year. Jackson, look at that effort, gets nine more. And he's so patient, just allowing things to kind of set themselves. Waiting for his right guard to pull and get, get around. And then all of a sudden, you see the explosiveness. You never get, you never get to line him up. Jackson's so, so good at is putting you where he wants you to go. See, he went over 100 on the last play. It looked like he did it on a third and seven a couple of plays ago. This a third and eight. Here comes the pressure. Jordan Jones can't get to him. Alvini escapes, and he gets about six. And it'll be fourth down. And it's enough for Pat Fitzgerald will go for it here. Not going to trot the kicker on the field here. He told us when uh, we get he gets past the 50-yard line, he's not afraid to go for it. 62% on the year in converting on fourth down. And to your point, Charlie Kubander's long on the season is just 40 yards, so they're not really in his range yet. They have to get to the 24-yard line. They're one for two on fourth down today. It's their 37th attempt this season. Alvidi escapes the pressure, dumps it off underneath, incomplete. They say Flynn Nagel trapped it with the grass. And Alvidi took a shot. Josh Pascal arrived just a little bit as the ball, right before the ball was released. You, uh, as the backup, protect yourself because it's a fall, far fall when you go there, when you, if he's to get hurt. Kentucky takes over on a turnover on downs, down 10. Saheem King, in relief of Benny Snell, gets the edge, breaks tackles, stays on his feet, and is out of bounds near the 45-yard line. That's 12 yards. It could have been a loss of five. Yeah, he's usually used, Taylor, as the change-up back to Benny Snell, the hard-running downhill runner and Sahin King comes in adds an element of speed now all of a sudden he finds himself as the primary back Billy Snell ejected on one of the most questionable personal foul calls you'll ever see King and Rose 
in relief. And now Johnson delivers to Taven Richardson, who's had a big day today. That's his fourth catch. Well, nice grabs by Richardson. Really, really like him. He's a good looking young player, just a sophomore. Greer, South Carolina, Burns High School. Good football school or his high school good program there. Yeah, everybody all season, Andre told us that he was the most improved receiver on the team from his freshman year to his sophomore year, tripled his produ production. Just consistent receivers, how Eddie Grant described it. Play action. Johnson, deep ball. Awan Ross, at least initially, is given a catch inside the 20-yard line. Now you hurry up, press the gas, and go ahead and get this thing snapped. There's the look, he's underthrown a little bit. Awan Ross, that's a grab. Incredible. Well, whether they review it or not, it's a catch. 37 yards and an amazing job to be able to get that. Lynn Bowden makes the catch, as you said. Kentucky goes really quick and gets a couple of yards. Let's take another look at this amazing catch by the senior from Westchester, Ohio. You see him sliding here. It's a heck of a job in terms of concentration. Not sure if there's enough as the defender slides in front of the hook, enough to overturn it if it weren't. It's now second and eight in the red zone. Johnson near the end zone. The ladder goes Richardson, first and goal. So this young man is having some coming out party. Whoever the quarterback turns out, turns out to be next year, next spring, maybe next fall going into the season, he has got one heck of a receiver and a weapon in Taven Richardson. Five catches for 89 yards, and how about the guts of Steven Johnson after missing the last couple of drives due to injuries. I'd go there again. Nice matchup in the corner here. Instead, Steven will keep it himself. It's touchdown, Kentucky. Yeah, the defense able to get themselves off the field. And then the offense comes back to life with Steven Johnson back in the game, leading the way. This little uh, read option decides to keep it. He walks in the corner to get uh, the Kentucky Wildcats right back in this game. You think this fires Big Blue Nation up oh, when your no, team no leader doubt. goes to the locker room after an injury and comes out on the field and marches down on the first drive of the third quarter? No doubt about it. Showing you some toughness. Kentucky with their second touchdown of the day. Down three in Nashville, thanks to their team leader in his final game for Big Blue. Northwestern has had a fantastic time in Nashville. You saw redshirt freshman Jesse Mailer holding the belt for winning the Nashville Hot Chicken competition. The team took in some great karaoke as well. Northwestern's had an outstanding trip to Nashville. They're holding on to a 17-14 lead over Kentucky after the Wildcats of UK's second touchdown of the day. Let's go quickly to Olivia. Guys, that wing contest got pretty heated, excuse the pun, but Mike Edwards for Kentucky only ate three, but he's adamant that he thought it'd be wings, not breaded tenders. He's a little <laughs> upset about it, and it was really spicy, but Courtney Love said, no, we just had little guys competing. <laughs> Uh, good times at bowl games. He's had a lot of fun here. McGinnis' kick is fielded inside the five by J.R. Pace. And Pace is past the 30. Good field position for Northwestern. Northwestern trying for their eighth consecutive win and a 10-win season, clinging to a three-point lead against Kentucky. In beautiful Nashville, Tennessee for the 20th playing of the Franklin American Mortgage Music City Bowl. Northwestern leads Kentucky 17-14. Here's what's at stake. Kentucky going for their first eight-win season in 10 years. Northwestern's looking for their fifth 10-win season in school history. Pat Fitzgerald is third as a head coach, fourth that he's been part of. He was a player on the 1995 10-win team. 
Northwestern, if they win, will have 27 wins in three years. That's the best stretch since 1903 through 05. Oh, back the other way. Oh, my God. And it's Jackson, and they do trap him in the backfield. Darius West, the safety, comes up. You see Tamir DuBose as well in there. Well, they decide to run blitz. With all the success that Justin Jackson has had tonight, they bring an extra defender around the line of scrimmage in the form of Darius West and Corral and playing him from in, outside in to make sure he doesn't get outside of contain. And there's some help coming from inside out. Second and 13 after a three yard loss for Jackson, who has 133 yards rushing today. The option pitch to him. And Josh Allen takes him on. It's third down. What a player. Richard at sixth in the SEC in sacks this year. A guy that can play, certainly play sideline to sideline, and not just because of the number, but he reminds me a lot of Zach Cunningham. They played at Tennessee at uh, Vanderbilt a year ago, also a Houston Texan. We led the SEC in tackles a year ago, but uh, what Josh Allen is is one heck of a player. That long, athletic build at 6'5", 230, could stand to put on another 10, 10 pounds or so. Alvedi and Northwestern have to get to the 38. Empty backfield on third and 11, and he overshoots Macon Wilson. Chris Westrian, pretty good coverage along that side. And Kentucky, once again, going to get off the field. And it'll be interesting to see if Steven Johnson comes back into this football game. Johnson banged up a couple of times today by Joe Gaziano. Nice wonder on to punt for the fourth time. Charles Walker, third in the country in punt return average, hasn't had much of a chance so far today. He's got one here. Almost nothing doing, gets a couple back after a 46-yard punt. Kentucky with a chance to tie or take the lead, down three. Last year at the Pinstripe Bowl, Tyler Lancaster and his family's life changed as his father, Brad, felt some pain in his mouth at the game. A malignant tumor was found in his father's mouth, and stage four cancer was discovered. His father was on the field for senior day on November the 18th and is in the press box today watching his son. We are all fighting with you, Mr. Lancaster, and certainly thinking of Tyler and his entire family. And that num the number one is worn by Tyler Lancaster. It's voted on by his teammates and pretty big honor to wear that jersey number. Zaheem King bouncing around has no place to go and Warren Long making his first ever start at outside linebacker in relief of the injured Nate Hall. Guy that transitioned from running back on the tackle. For more on Tyler Lancaster, let's go to Olivia. Yeah, Taylor. Tyler said it was a tidal wave of emotion, and his mom, Bonnie, tries to not tell him the day-to-day -day pain that his dad's in or the procedures they have to go through. Let him keep his focus on school and football. But Coach Fitzgerald was just so impressed with how he's handled it. What a catch that is made there by Juice Johnson. I haven't seen a lot of him today, but two big catches for the man playing in his last game. Kentucky's top receiver gets 12. And did it on third down to keep a drive moving earlier in this game here on second down. Nice comeback route from Pearl to keep himself between the ball and the defender. Nice play to move the chains. Steven Johnson in and out of the game, but has been terrific throwing the ball down the field, looking for Juice Johnson again. He's double covered. And sometimes when within a game, you know that you need a play to be made. Juice Johnson is, is that individual. For me, it was Jason Phillips, James Dixon. I needed to have a play made at, at the University of Houston. Those two guys always seem to make a play when, when needed. It hasn't mattered today. Nine different receivers have caught a pass for Kentucky as Steven Johnson and Drew Barker have spread the wealth. The 
the backfield, the fake to King, and over the middle to Bowden, he can't make the catch, long in coverage. Yeah, it hung up in the air a while and did not get to the hands of, of Lynn Bowden fast enough because Steven Johnson had to throw this off his back foot. You see him here never really getting to set to step and really drill that ball to get anything on it where Bowden could actually make a play. I'm sure Lynn would say he should have made that catch. Kentucky one for seven on third down today. Needing a conversion here. Johnson under pressure escapes on the run in front of Juice Johnson. He can't make the catch. He's fighting and scratching and a little bit too long of a fourth down situation with 10.51 left in the game for Mark Stoops to even entertain going for it. So you're going to rely on your defense once again. To, to get a stop and get you the football back. Seventh punt for Matt Panton after Sam Duke Miller, another terrific freshman in, from Andre Ware country in Houston, applied that pressure. Nagel makes the catch, takes on two defenders and dives ahead. Near the 25 yard line, Northwestern clinging to a three point lead. TV. A good gift bag that they, uh, <laughs> They furnish as well, and then you look at Hattie B's, boy, that'll heat you up, won't it? You'll start sweating, that's for oh, sure. No doubt. Jeremy Larkin spelling Justin Jackson standing next to Matt Alvedi in the backfield. And Larkin, who might be the man next year, says, how about this year? Into the clear. Inside the 10. Mike Edwards prevents the touchdown as Larkin goes wild. Came in, fresh set of legs, and explosive plays once again haunting the Kentucky Wildcats, this time in the form of a run by Jeremy Larkin, the redshirt freshman from Cincinnati, Ohio. 64 yards for him on that carry, and Northwestern Western is gashing Kentucky on the ground for over 300 yards. Vidi just throws it in front of Riley Lee's incomplete. Riley Lee didn't want any part of that one. He said, hey, I'm going to let this one go. I took a shot earlier in the game from Derek Payton. Forget about that. You see here the production. Larkin over 100 yards, 14.7 14 yard, 14 yards per carry. And certainly Justin Jackson at 135 yards in this ball game. Backup quarterback Matt alvidi has got 54 yards running as well. Combined, the Northwestern Wildcats have 303. And this is Larkin again inside the five to the four. Larkin and Jackson are built similarly. With about 5'10, 5'11 for Justin Jackson. Larkin at about 195, and Jackson goes about 200 pounds. He's averaging 13.8 yards per carry. Yeah, that, that last run took his, his average down a little bit. This feels like a huge play here for Kentucky to try to keep it a one possession game. Larkin stopped near the two. Darius West, a safety coming up again. And it's fourth down. You got to be elusive to make it Mike Edwards miss. Didn't miss much, but Larkin in the hole was able to escape the mitts of Mike Edwards. Chip shot field goal, or do you go for it if you're Northwestern on a fourth and one to try to put the game away? Well, Pat Fitzgerald told us that he is not shy about going for it on fourth down. So he is going to roll the dice here. I'm okay with it. You got a lead. You believe in your offensive line. And we mentioned it since the Penn State game. They have been playing some pretty, pretty stout football up front. Need to get to the one for a first down. Fourth and one, Jackson next to Alvidi. And it's a reverse. And Lees is under all kinds of pressure wanting to throw the ball to the end zone. Up for grabs, incomplete. 
They try a trick play on fourth and one, and Kentucky gets off the field again. Now, if you ask me about the play call, <laughs> that's a little bit different. And uh, I'm, I'm going to line Justin Jackson up and run the football downhill behind Blake Hans, J.B. Butler, Brad North, and Tommy Doles and Rashawn Slater. They try the trick play with Lees. Kentucky says, no, sir. UK gets the ball back. I am just an icon living. Kentucky trails 17-14 to number 21, Northwestern. It's always easy to play armchair quarterback when a trick play doesn't work, but Andre, he got the best back in school history in his final game. Don't you keep the football with Justin Jackson? One of the better backs in all of college football that not a lot of fans know about. And I line him up, that big offensive line, get some push, let him go to work. So Steven Johnson in Kentucky operating standing in his own end zone. This is just the 16th play on offense they've had this half. And K1 Ross gives them better field position on a nice strike from Johnson. Like the explosiveness. We're pushing the gas a little bit offensively for Kentucky, taking, being the aggressor there, not just going to run the football out of the end zone to get some breathing room. Would you throw it? Senior quarterback made a nice quick decision and a completion. 14 yards. On the catch from the senior from Westchester, Ohio. Johnson facing pressure from Gaziano, and he's picked off. Straddling the sideline is Kyle Gayro. Touchdown, Northwestern. Well, Gaziano can just take over a game. Now, he didn't get there, but he certainly affected the placement because it rushed Steven Johnson. We had to take a look and see if. Oh, so far, so good. That is a Houdini act by the senior from New Jersey, Kyle Cairo, with his eighth career interception. I think that's going to stand and pick six. Unbelievable. The concentration here. Kubander to make it a 10 point game. Joe Gaziano has been in the backfield all day. And as you said, Andre, the pressure that he gave Steven Johnson created this interception. Yeah, just forced the throw a little bit where you can't really step into it and get everything on it. But I think uh, Cal Cairo had such a break on it. I'm not sure that, you know, regardless of a clean pocket or not, going there was not the right place in which to throw the football. Ash Daniel on the squib kick past the 25-yard line. Pat. Kentucky near the 40. S.J. pumps one on one to Ross again incomplete Hardich right there with him for more on Northwestern's huge facility. Let's go down to Olivia. Well Pat Fitzgerald had a big part in the design but he really wanted to build it around the players. He said he needs synergy between the players and coaches. In fact the team rooms flow right into the coaches offices. Guys they looked at 65 NFL facilities to get a vision together for what they want. All glass lake facing. He says it makes us look like the big time program that we are. Pat Ryan the billionaire insurance man has had such a huge imprint on his alma mater as King takes it past the 50 yard line right at the chains and you know, a little pushing and shoving at the end of the play. King was was blown down, blown, the play was blown dead and he was down already. Not sure what the melee is about, but Pat Fitzgerald told us he said he didn't want, he doesn't want to want to build a house. Get a chance first to look at the end of this, still laying on a body, but Ball did come out, but Saheem King did come back, come up with the football. Siano trying to get to Johnson. Instead, down the field, pass underthrown to Garrett Deuce Johnson as McShepard in coverage 
it's second down. To finish your thought on Pat Ryan, the billionaire insurance man, he, mm -hmm. he said in the, the late 70s that Northwestern almost went to the Ivy League. They were so bad at football, and he was so discouraged that he said through his success, he wanted to make the any financial commitment necessary so that they could be competitive against all teams in the Big Ten. And that's happening now <laughs> in 2017 into 18 with this new field house that he has his name on. Yeah, when you can, and when it opens, how that's going to affect recruits unbelievably, that, that will transform the, the program in itself. Second and ten pass in Ali. Incomplete. To put, to put a bow on that, though, Pat Fitzgerald, he said he doesn't want to build a house because I've looked at so many doorknobs and, <laughs> yes. and things of that sort and had to chew, pick and choose that those things. I don't want any part of that anymore. So uh, it's, it's about all that. The process is finished. They're just waiting to uh, to complete it and move in. And I, I think it's going to do wonders for Northwestern's program. Kentucky has to get to the Northwestern 39. He, on the underneath throw, gets to the 41. It'll be fourth and two from there. I think this is a, a position on the field in which Mark Stoops is going to have to roll the dice here. It's about six and a half minutes left in the ball game. And where's Juice Johnson when you need him? Big fourth down here if they decide to throw the football, which I think they will without Benny Snell in the backfield. Juice is actually on the sideline in this situation. Here's K1 Ross where he's gone at other times. On the fourth down throw, it's caught. Nice catch made by Charles Walker to move the chains. Excellent throw. Excellent catch, and the timing was perfect. From Johnson to Walker, just enough to get the first down, inside move, and away from Brett Walsh, the, the outside linebacker. Walker, the senior from Louisville, the Kentucky basketball team crushing Louisville today. Somehow skirts through there for a few, past the 35, down to the 34. So five and a half left. Kentucky is in field goal range. As McGinnis has got a cannon for a leg. They need points this drive, whether it's in the form of a field goal or they get themselves into the end zone. Second and two after the Northwestern penalty. Johnson pumps. And too tall for Isaiah Epps. Steven Johnson is playing knowing that he has four downs to get the job done to pick up, up first downs right now. Third and two. He knows that uh, he's working with all four downs going forward. Two hundred forty one yards passing. For the man from Rancho Cucamonga, California, in his last game in a Kentucky uniform. Team, no place to go. Stopped in the backfield back at the 30 yard line. Lancaster and company making the tackle, and here comes McGinnis to try to make it a seven point game. Yeah, and his range about 50 to 55 yards. One of the best doing it. Austin McGinnis. He has 71 career field goals. This a 48-yard attempt to break his season mark that he set last year. Automatic. 21 field goals last year, 22 as a senior. Needed a field goal, at least three points in that drive. Kentucky able to put one on the board and draw with within seven points of Northwestern. You're watching the Franklin American Mortgage Music City Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. It's the 20th edition of this great game in Nashville, and Northwestern holds on to a seven-point lead over Kentucky. 
Well, Kentucky has not won a bowl game since the 2008 season. And 424 to change that. As McGinnis will kick it deep to Jeremy Larkin. And he's coming out. Mistake made at the 16 yard line. He was leveled. That was Tobias Gilliam. I'm gonna give him the credit for that huge hit that he made. So what was at stake there for both of these teams. Justin Jackson running in the final minutes of his incredible collegiate career. I mean, it just looks like at times he is going to get blown up. And then he gives it and takes it away. I mean, the shiftiness right here. Pascal, you thought, Pascal, you thought had him. And another defender for Kentucky, you thought had him bottled up. And he makes both miss on his way to a first down. What a player. Now the nation getting a chance to see a guy that is rushed for over a thousand yards four consecutive years. It's hard to do. One, you got to stay healthy. We get the amount of carries, and he is he's done exactly that. Well, here comes carry number 30. At least the next time they give him the football, there it is. 13 yards on the last carry, and he's into the secondary again with seven more you consider last year he had 224 yards rushing as the mvp of the pinstripe bowl which northwestern won he's got 155 with 320 to go in this hey, one 30 carries no problem just hop up <laughs> give it to me again what a job he's done tonight both he and jeremy larkin his counterpart in the backfield as durable as any back you'll ever see in college football yeah. if ever it's because you, it's because you never get a clean shot on him. You're gonna you, you get you you may tackle him, but you never get a clean shot. Milking all of the clock is Alvidi before giving way to Jackson, and he doesn't have much there. He's just as impressive off the field as Kentucky will use a timeout. The, Justin Jackson was one of 13. They're first in the half. Finalists for the National Football Foundation Campbell Trophy as the sport's top scholar athlete. He got an $18,000 postgraduate scholarship. Just a complete player. <laughs> 242 to go and a big third and four for Northwestern. They're three of seven in this half. They give it to Jackson again. And the extra effort is just short of the first down. It's fourth down. And I got to believe here, Pat Fitzgerald will send the punter out and punt this baby away. This side of the 50-yard line, he's he's thinking about it. Players are trying to talk him into going for it here. But Tommy Doles actually got in the way. The third team all Big Ten right guard. Looks like Northwestern is going to at least initially show that they're going for it on their own 39-yard line on a fourth and one. Alvidi on the sneak. It'll depend on the spot. I don't think so, Taylor. What a gamble by Pat Fitzgerald. Well beyond his 50-yard, the 50-yard line, and I think. Courtney Love came out of the pile with the football. Yeah, they can't even find the ball because Courtney Love has it running towards the Kentucky bench. But that mark, it's always the forward foot of the official, looks to be short. Northwestern now one of five on fourth down today. Kentucky gets the football with 231 left. That's an excellent field position to go down to try to tie this game up. Such an aggressive choice by Northwestern to go for it again. Now one of five on fourth down today. And Kentucky has the football inside Northwestern's 40 with 2.31 to go and one timeout. Johnson, middle of the field. And it's Rigg who somehow got between defenders for a first down. His second catch tonight. He had one on the season coming in. He's a young tight end, just a sophomore. It was just 
continue to get better. And how about the confidence that Steven Johnson has in Justin Rigg to go to him on a couple of occasions tonight. 16 yards inside the 25 near the 23. Johnson runs past the 20 and stays on his feet near the 17 yard line where he's tackled by Nathan Fox. Yeah, that was one of the things that Pat Fitzgerald was concerned about was when Steven Johnson pulled the ball down to run with it and make plays with his legs. And he's certainly capable. 300 yards, 358 to be exact on the season with three touchdown runs and another one tonight. Second and four, Kentucky can get a first down past the 13. Johnson pumps under pressure, down he goes, back at the 20-yard line. Warren Long got him. Now you gotta go ahead and speed things up, get back, get set. You got receivers walking back to the line of scrimmage. Only be about under a minute when you snap this thing with, on third down. What a time for Long's first career sack in his first career start. Lock running. Kentucky's one of ten on third down today, 0 for 4 in the second half. Two plays to get past the 13. Johnson, middle of the field, incomplete. Here comes the flag if yeah. the red back judge can find it. He's so he's got so many layers on with the weather and the cold <laughs> down there, he couldn't find the flag. Well, this is going to be a pass interference and an automatic first down for Kentucky. Question is, my friend, Mark, if they score here and score a touchdown, will Mark Stoops Holding go for two? Holding receiver defense. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Will he go for two? If he gets to that position, first another look at this holding call on Northwestern. We're clear. It's Godwin Igwebuke. <laughs> So now first and goal with 43 seconds left. Kentucky just inside the 10. Cover zero and all out blitz coming right now. Johnson on a design quarterback keeper has daylight. And he lowers the shoulder. Touchdown. Steven Johnson throws a pick six to Kyle Cairo and comes back with 10 unanswered points. Kentucky down one. And as you said, with 37 seconds left, at least initially, their offense is staying on the field going for two. Yeah, he's gonna, his down numbers, his best back out of this ball game and Benny Snell gonna try to end this baby right now. No Benny Snell ejected in the first half. Kentucky's had to change their identity. They trailed by 10 points in the fourth quarter. Going for the win with 37 seconds left. Uh, this is six foot six out here. There's Johnson there in motion. Johnson will throw. In zone, Taven Richardson can't make the catch. Marcus McShepard there in coverage. Northwestern takes over. Once again, having to throw under duress. Forces or speeds up things when you can get pass rush, and they did it there with just four rushers. Set, all of a sudden, it's not clean. It doesn't, the time's there, not, he doesn't have ideal time. That one just sails on him just a little bit. You see Fitz's reaction here, and he knows he needs his team to recover an onside kick that Mark Stoops' team will now have to attempt after he made the bold decision of going for the win. The game has had so many twists and turns, and here is Austin McGinnis with the onside kick attempt to try to give Kentucky the football back. 
Instead, he angles it past the Wildcats, and it's covered up easily down at the 25-yard line by Montre Hardage. And Northwestern is going to win back-to-back -back bowl games for the first time in school history. But credit to Pat Fitzgerald and the Wildcats from Evanston. Another 10-win season, and they'll finish the season in the top 25. What a job, what a ball game. And I agree totally with Mark Stoops and going for it there, for trying to put the game away with a two-point conversion. No doubt about it. Oh, Olivia's got Fitz. First of all, I know that's cold, right? Oh my goodness, uh, what a game. What a, what a hard fought battle. Uh, Mark, his young man, what a battle. I'm so proud of our guys. The adversity we faced today was pretty indicative of the whole year. And uh, got a little bowl game aggressive, but you know, it worked out because the guys made the plays, and I'm incredibly proud of them. On that point, you lost your quarterback, you lost one of your best defensive players. How did you guys get it done? Just character. It's Wildcat men being Wildcat men. That's who we recruit. They're from great families. It's an honor and a privilege to be their coach and to send our seniors out. 27 wins over three years hasn't happened around here a lot. Now, this group joins a very special fraternity of Wildcat men in the 10 win club. And to do it with the 314 GPA, this is the most special group of men in the country, and I'm honored and privileged to be their coach. Coach, thank you. Congratulations. Thanks. Happy New Year. Go Cats. Once again, our final score, Northwestern 24, Kentucky 23. Coming up next, it's the H&R Block College football pregame. So long from Nashville. Let's send it back to the studio.